This is a demonstration that can fit in different levels of chemistry, physical science, AP chemistry. Really, a number of different principles can be taught with this demonstration. It involves a battery-powered clock, and eventually we'll replace the battery with some chemicals that I have down below. But before we go to the chemistry part, let's take a closer look at the back. The, ba the clock is powered by just one AA battery, so it needs about one and a half volts of energy to power the clock. To show this to students, rather than saying, let me put the battery in the back and have it be mysterious, what I want to do is I want to take and connect some of these little alligator wires. onto the terminals where the battery would normally go. What that's going to allow me to do is to connect the battery in plain view of the students. So I'll turn this around and connect the battery and hopefully the clock will work. I put this here on this end and that goes there, the clock starts. And so the battery is providing one and a half volts of energy to power the clock. That energy comes from the battery. It's possible to replace that battery with some good old fashioned chemistry. So let me disconnect the battery. Oop. And I'm going to pour in some, this is one molar copper sulfate, that's going to go here. And some magnesium sulfate will go in here. With the second hand located on the downhill side of the clock, we're ready to connect the battery. The battery here, we're replacing the battery with one molar copper sulfate with a copper plate. Over in this beaker, we have some freshly polished magnesium ribbon simply wrapped around a plastic spoon. And simply, I'm going to connect the wires onto the copper metal. And then the red wire is going to go on to the magnesium. Now it's important which wire is connected with which type of wire because we know that magnesium is far more reactive. And so what we see it, it is the clock is not working. Now, hmm. If we look at the periodic table, we see magnesium is here, and magnesium being here in group 2A, that magnesium is more reactive than is the copper. Copper is more likely to accept electrons than it is to give it up relative to magnesium. And that's typical as we teach the periodic table with the active metals are located on the far left of the periodic table. So it's not surprising or what should happen with this would be that the magnesium will give its electrons, they will pass through the red wire, through the clock, and over to the copper in the copper sulfate solution and yet the clock is not working. If we look at this, so the electrons pass through, they go through the clock, and then they stop here. That is a problem. That's a problem. At this point, my students would be saying, you don't have a complete circuit after they're done laughing 
saying, I can't believe you've screwed this up. I wish, I wish, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Because what's missing is what we would call the salt bridge. And so if I've done this right, as you know, hot dogs contain lots of salt. Salt, sodium chloride, ions. Ions conduct electricity. And I really hope this does what it should do. By almost starting and stopping, you can draw most students into this demo in a way that perhaps they didn't even realize. Here we go. Make it happen. Please work. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing some clickage. We're good to go. We are good to go. Now, we have to be careful in how we show this. Again, if it's, a, if it's a physical science class, what I'd be saying here is, take a look at the chemical energy being converted into electrical energy. There's nothing wrong, if they look at this, if this becomes the visual image of chemical energy being converted into electrical energy, this is something, the hot dog clock demo, you can refer back to that several years later. Misconceptions. Wow, the hot dog has a battery jammed inside it. No, 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 no. The hot dog provides a source of ions. Those ions help keep each beaker's contents electrically neutral. That's what a salt bridge does. It just so happens that this salt bridge is a hot dog, and hot dogs do contain a lot of table salt but it doesn't have to be sodium chloride. There are many different ways that you could connect those in terms of making your own salt bridge. The real source of voltage for this experiment would be the highly reactive mag magnesium as well as the copper. And at the AP level or perhaps honors chemistry level, you may teach the standard reduction potential and EOX and E reduction and so forth, you could have the students calculate what is the predicted voltage based upon this electrochemical cell. Also, you could introduce terms like voltaic or galvanic cells. At the AP level, I find that all I have to say is, oh, a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell, hot dog clock demo. Put the hot dog in, it spontaneously started and that's a characteristic of voltaic or galvanic type of cells. So a lot of mileage out of this demonstration in terms of how far do you want to take it. It's an interesting thing, and there are different versions of this. You may see the potato clock, okay, and sold by a number of different uh, folks there, and that's nice. It's got a little uh, liquid crystal type of display there. And you can use, I guess this is called the two potato clock. You can use lemons, you can use potatoes. Something that you may not be familiar with or depending on your age. Before the era of microwave ovens, some may remember the hot dogger. The hot dogger, and you can still buy these online at online auction type of places. And what this consists of, if you look here, because hot dogs contain sodium chloride, they can partially conduct electricity. And so one hot dog would be placed here on one side, and it gets plugged in over here. We connect the top, and believe it or not, you plug this right into the wall, which is a little bit scary. I think I'll stick with the microwave oven approach of uh, heating up hot dogs, but by forcing electrical current through a hot dog, you can heat it up. Uh, a fascinating look back on how we used to do things. 
and there are a number of uh, applications of this. How I like to wrap things up, we're gonna, let's see, the hot dog, it's kind of like I want to go around the clock. I don't want to just go around it. I want to rock, 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 rock around observation, inference, observation, inference. We're rocking around the clock. This would be a great demo if you only have time to do one demo at open house. This might be the one that you want to do because the parents, first of all, have heard the song Rock Around the Clock. And secondly, they may remember this. Well, and I guess third, everybody's familiar with hot dogs, but we do want to make sure that we're careful. The hot dog is not providing the power because you don't want anybody shoving a hot dog in the back of the clock itself. I'd also point out this can scare your custodial staff. There were several times where our custodian would come in and would say, am I allowed to get near that or is that going to explode or what have you? Uh, for some reason, with all the wires, it looks rather intimidating. But you'll have students who will come in the very next day and say, hey, what happened to the clock? Is it working or not? What you'll find, as I unfortunately did, that the clock will stop working with the second hand somewhere between the seven and the nine. And it will be fluttering like this. Apparently, it takes a little bit more voltage to climb the hill than it does to fall down. Also, that little bit extra voltage as it starts that's a very real thing. Things like your air conditioner, when they first kick on, they need a little bit more voltage to get them going. That's very consistent or very true with the clock as well. So we always, always, always want to make sure that that second hand is on the downhill side so that we can get it starting. I learned about that the hard way my first year of teaching uh, when it just couldn't seem to make the hill. Okay, so here we have the hot dog clock demonstration. It's a demonstration your students will remember for a very long time, and it's a demonstration I see nothing wrong with repeating several times uh, because they could get it in the first year course as well as the second year course. It offers a tremendous opportunity to teach multiple concepts.